today we're going to be talking about uh, growth and development of the adolescents. So we have four um, prominent psychologists that had different theories on how a child grows and develops into an adult. The first one we're going to talk about today is uh, Freud. Super famous, um, and he bases his development on a psychosocial development that we uh, grow based on our sexual desires and our sexual needs. <coughs> Um, so he calls this stage the genitalia stage because he bases the stage on the erogenous zone that um, affects your sexual drive during each, each stage. Um, so at this stage, during the teens, uh, he says that we kind of go from what's called like an instinctual drive of like um, self-pleasure to one of an adult drive of, um, of wanting to um, um, have sex with opposite sex, peers, eventually leading to one-on-one -on -one relationship with, um, you know, family, child, etc. His, his ideas are pretty updated, and we don't really go by his ideas anymore, but it did prompt a lot of important things later. One of those is Erickson. He bases his developmental stages, um, he bases it off of Freud's, but he changes it a lot. Um, he bases it on a psychosocial stages. So he says that, um, you know, we grow in how we relate to others. This stage for adolescent is identity versus role confusion. The big thing that adolescents are asking is, um, who am I? So they're in a transition from childhood to, to adulthood, and they're in search of this identity. In order for them to be successful at this stage, they have to explore various roles, set goals, and actively attempt to discover that by, by trying different things. If they don't make this conscious search, or if they're pressured into to being what their parents want them to be, conforming to their parents' ideas of the future, um, they'll probably struggle to find themselves as an adult. This is also the beginning of sexual, sexual maturation, and when that happens, the adolescent body begins to change, and they can have a lot of body issues at this time as well. If they're successful, though, they'll develop into what's called fidelity, which is the ability to um, form genuine relationships because you can relate to others. Um, another very prominent um, psychologist is uh, Piaget. Um, and he bases his on a cognitive development. Um, it's kind of how the mind works, what the mind is able to do, how it reasons through things. Um, at this age, what's called, it's called a formal operational stage. The two big um, um, cornerstones of that are the ability to abstractly think and what's called hypothetico deductive reasoning. Um, so abstract thinking is just what it sounds like. We're able to understand things by thinking about them, not just seeing them on paper, drawing it out, counting it on your fingers. Um, and um, along with that is this hypothetico deductive reasoning. Um, and they're able to develop a hypothesis and approach problems with an organized and systematic manner. Um, so it's just like the scientific theory. I have an hypothesis, I'm gonna change one thing instead of just doing something completely different and hoping that it changes. Um, so they're able to go, go about it in that scientific way. Um, last one we have Kohlberg. So Kohlberg um, also builds upon Piaget um, and he has a moral developmental um, matru maturity. He calls this stage the social contract stage, but you know not even every adult gets to this stage, but usually when you do, it's kind of in your teenage years. Uh, you base morality and on a social contract, which is social order plus individual rights. So the following research was conducted by Tiffany Panza and Meredith Smith. There are two periods of rapid physical growth in a child's life, infancy and adolescence. Adolescence is thought of in three stages. Early adolescence is age 11 to 14, middle adolescence is age 15 to 17, and late adolescence is age 18 to 21. For this presentation, we will be focusing on early and middle adolescence. A huge part of adolescent development occurs through puberty, although it occurs at different times and different rates. Muscle mass increases in boys and fat deposits increase in girls, preparing their bodies for reproductive maturity. During puberty, adolescents will grow rapidly until they achieve their full height, known as peak height velocity. Boys will achieve full height between 18 and 20 years of age, while girls will achieve full height about two to two and a half years after menarche. Among both sexes, physical growth occurs in parallel with sexual maturation and is correlated with the release of sex hormones, 
estrogen in girls, and testosterone in boys. Typically, Tanner stages three to five occur during adolescence, and once Tanner stage five is achieved, the adolescent has reached full sexual maturity. The most common clinical concerns about puberty are delayed puberty and short stature, particularly in boys. Common causes of delayed puberty are poor nutrition, chronic illness, eating disorders, and severe psychological stress. Common causes of early puberty in, are obesity in girls and abnormalities of the central nervous system that disrupts the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. With practice, adolescents become adept at activities that require fine motor skills, such as sewing, typing, music, and art. Increases in large muscle mass and development of gross motor skills help adolescents compete in sports, dancing, and other athletics, which allows them to burn off energy as well as form social, social relationships with peers and engage in competition. During early adolescence, the young teen has a belief that everyone is watching and judging everything they do, a phenomenon that has been described as an imaginary audience. And indeed, young teens are quite critical of one another. Peers are hugely important to adolescents and they need one another's approval on everything from appearance to social behavior and language. Feelings about self-image and social relationships are intense and can dominate early to middle adolescence. So I have um, an appearance by a couple of real life adolescents. First, this is Brooke Panza. She's going into seventh grade. It's okay. And um, she's gonna tell us a little bit about what it's like, like what, should, what do you think about your friends? Like how important are your friends and their opinions to your life? You just look at the camera and tell us. Well, they help me a lot when I'm struggling in school for okay. stuff that I can't really explain to my parents. Okay. And it's it's fun hanging out with them. Okay. Okay. All right, Jess, what about you? Like, here. Um, so this is Jesse Panza. He's um, going to be a freshman in high school. Yeah. And so what do you think about your friends? Like, how important are your friends to your life, your peers? Like, what, what do you, their opinions mean to you? Uh, their opinions don't mean that much to me because most of the time they're, they're like just messing around. Okay. But they're like important to me because they're like the people I hang out with at school and this could have people you know at school. Okay. All right. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to say? No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, during the three phases of adolescence, Cognitive development slowly changes from concrete to abstract thinking. As described by Piaget, formal operations, also called abstract thinking, occurs in the last stage of adolescent development. Adolescents think in the here and now. Their brains have not developed yet for them to understand future consequences of today's actions. When it comes to language development and communication, social skills and self-confidence have a huge impact in how well adolescents express themselves to others. Some adolescents communicate better through written communication, while others do better with verbal expression. Electronic and digital communication have had a huge impact on adolescents in recent years. Some of this technology is so new that it may take time for good research to become available. But as many parents know, text messaging, social media, YouTube, and other applications that keep kids constantly connected have changed many aspects of adolescence in recent years. So Jesse, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, like your phone and just tell us uh, what what your phone means to you? Like, do you think, could you actually like live without your phone? Yeah. You easily. could. Okay. Talk to the camera. Easily. Okay. Um, you think you could easily live without your phone? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite app? All YouTube. But how would you communicate with your friends if you didn't have your phone? Uh, I would use the home phone and call them. Okay. All right. What other apps do you play with besides YouTube? Uh, Fortnite Mobile. Okay. Okay. All right. Also, oh yeah, Snapchat too. That stuff. Snapchat too? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about you, Brooke? What's your favorite app? Oh, I like Instagram. Okay, why do you like Instagram? Because I can connect with my friends and I can see what everyone else is doing, especially in the summertime. Okay. Do you ever feel like social media, do you ever feel like left out because of things you see on social media? Yeah, definitely. 
And sometimes when I see stuff that my friends post of them all hanging out, it kind of makes me feel left out. But yeah, I could see that. Um, do you think you could live without your phone? I don't know. I mean, it depends on if I ever knew. I don't know. But I bet I could in some way. But most of the time, I use my phone a lot, so I don't know if I could. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so, because identity formation is an important part of adolescent growth, parents may notice that their teenagers are focused on themselves and appear to be self-absorbed, lazy, or irresponsible. Interestingly, these self-absorbed behaviors are developmentally appropriate. Nurses can help parents understand that teens really do need time and energy to think, concentrate on themselves, and determine who they are going to be in adulthood. Erickson described this as identity formation versus role confusion, and this phase corresponds to Freud's genital stage of psychosocial development. Um, the common challenges and issues related to normal growth and development in adolescence are the achievement of biological and sexual maturation, the development of personal identity, the development of intimate sexual relationships with an appropriate peer, and the establishment of independence and autonomy in context of the sociocultural environment. In addition to puberty and the completion of growth, as well as the development of cognitive skills, adolescents develop a clearer sense of personal and sexual identity and develop a degree of emotional, personal, and financial independence from their parents. Adolescence is generally a period of wellness. Young people may seek health care for school or sports physicals, skin conditions such as acne, acute minor illnesses such as colds and flu, conditions related to sexuality such as birth control, pregnancy, or sexually transmitted diseases, and the management of chronic illnesses such as asthma or diabetes. Adolescent health promotion and disease prevention are achieved through adequate nutrition, rest, balanced exercise, and proper immunization against disease. So during adolescence, the accelerated growth in sexual maturation increases teenagers' nutritional needs, meaning they need more protein, calories, zinc, calcium, and iron. Periods of intense growth require increased caloric intake. Snacks and regular meals need to contain adequate nutrients to meet the body's anabolic needs. Some factors that include that influence the adolescent's diet are a busy schedule, concerns about body image, skipping breakfast, eating away from home, eating fast food often, and psychological and emotional problems. Rest is important to the growing adolescent, and an average overall amount of sleep that's recommended is nine hours per night, but many adolescents get less than that because of hectic after-school activity schedules, homework, and electronic devices in the bedroom. The recommended amount of exercise for adolescents is 60 minutes of aerobic exercise per day, um, yet many adolescents, in fact about 20% or less, actually meet the recommended levels of participation in regular exercise. Injury prevention is important during adolescence because injuries claim more lives than any other causes of death combined. Um, the predominance of injuries results from a combination of factors, including peer pressure, inexperience, and impulsivity. Alcohol and other drugs that impair judgment are known to contribute to fatal injuries among adolescents, especially those involving firearms and motor vehicles. Nurses and parents can reinforce many safety behaviors, including car safety, water safety, and suicide awareness. Um, teenage, teenage drivers should take driver education programs, wear their seatbelts, and um, should be discouraged from using cell phones or any drugs or alcohol while driving. Um, nurses and parents should understand that suicide is the second leading cause of death for teens and adults ages 15 to 24 years and should be aware that it's important to identify adolescents at risk for suicide. Thank you.